solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. I wanted to go back to one of the things you mentioned, uh, David, in the context of feedback. You know, uh, in the book, you also talk about uh, the feedback sandwich uh, and you talk about, <laughs> you know, uh, the limitations of the feedback sandwich where you start with something positive, quickly tick that box and move to the the brutal part of the brutally honest thing that you said and then close out with a token positive comment. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, you've observed uh, this and, and sort of the limitations of this kind of a shallow approach? It's not a limitation, it's dysfunctional in mm-hmm. many ways. For first, there's research to show that when you do that, the other person never hears a positive. Mm-hmm. They're waiting, they know what's coming. So, so you're wasting your time. The second thing is you're manipulating the other person. And it doesn't help a relationship to feel manipulated because I'm trying to loosen you up with this good compliment. Um, It's also, I think, insulting. It says, Mm. oh, you're such a fragile person. I've got to do this. Recently, I was doing another podcast and the person said, um, uh, my father would say to me, uh, Joe, I have a bone to pick with you. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful way to start. Hmm. You're laying out what the issue is and you're owning it. I have a bone to pick. Hmm. You could say, uh, there's something going on that's bothering me. I'm upset at what you're doing. I want to talk about it. Or you're doing some stuff which I think is hurting you. I'm being straightforward about saying there's an issue here. Hmm. And this is the issue which I'm involved with. I'm bothered. I'm worried. I'm unhappy. And if you also cannot have built up stories where you have demonized the other. Can you say this with the intention, even though you're annoyed, that you want to be helpful? So this is why I keep on saying you can be very direct. If I say, and I'm going to make this up, Deepak, I'm really bothered at what you're doing. And this is hurting us. I think it's hurting you. Hmm. I don't have to soften you up. I'm Hmm. laying out what it is. And then I name the behavior and I say, and this is what it's doing to me. Hmm. It's closing me down. It's making me feel distant from you. It's uh, not getting me to want to share as much as I want to share. But we've got to deal with this. Hmm. I mean, I don't need to say, oh, you're really, you know, that's really a very handsome set of uh, headsets that you've got on. And, oh, by the way, I don't have to do that nonsense. <laughs> hmm. And just maybe the last, sorry. Uh, David, let let me, you. if I may, there is a final cost of the feedback sandwich, and that is it delegitimizes positive feedback. Hmm. Often people don't know the full impact of what they do well. And we don't do a good job of that either. We say to mm. somebody, nice job. Well, that's useless. It makes the other person feel warm and fuzzy. But what was nice about that job? Mm. Again, you have to be behaviorally specific. It's much more helpful to say, Deepak, the way you handled that meeting was really good. I really liked it because you answered the questions in very succinct forms. 
you spoke to the other person's uh, concerns. You were well organized in your priesthood. Whatever it is, hmm. if it's behaviorally specific, you're going to learn something. Hmm. And what would it be like if we had organizations where members were committed to each other, and when they saw the other person doing something well, without using as a feedback sandwich, we go in and say, you know, I want to tell you something. You really did that well, and I want to tell you what you did well. Hmm. Everybody would learn more, and we'd have stronger relationships. Hmm. And staying with feedback, uh, you know, when it comes to developmental feedback, David, uh, when you have to uh, share that with uh, your colleagues, especially if you're somebody at a position of power and you're talking to one of your subordinates, what have you learned about doing it well? Um, okay. Um, I'm also going to want to talk about with your boss, what you can do. But let's mm -hmm. stick with your direct report. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you're known as a leader, who's concerned with the development of your direct reports, you're going to be a very desired leader. And we say at Stanford in this course, uh, we steal the Hallmark card uh, slogan. We say, I care enough to say the very worst. I think hmm. good leaders look for ways they can help develop their direct reports to make them better which may be to point out what they do well, uh, they may not be fully aware of, but also where they limit themselves. Hmm. So I think that if you as a leader are committed to developing your people as much as they are willing to be developed, the organization uh, benefits, the direct report benefits, and you benefit. Hmm. Now, I think you could also do this with your boss. Mm -hmm. One of the things to realize with this three-person, three-reality um, um, model is that you hold crucial information about the other person that they need. Others don't know the impact of their behavior. You know what your boss does that's useful, that's helpful, and what your boss does that's not so useful and not so helpful. Now, the question is, you've got to be pretty careful about sharing that. But I don't think you have to beat around the bush much. Hmm. What I do, and bosses walk around very frequently complaining. They say, I don't know why people don't speak up. I don't know why people are sitting their hands in the meetings. I don't know why people can't uh, raise issues with me. Mm -hmm. well, and what they're saying is, I'm in the dark. I don't know what's going on. Couldn't you say, or oh, gee, boss, that, that sounds upsetting. I don't know why people are doing that, hmm. but I've got a hunch. Well, what'd you like to hear? Now, your boss may say, hell no. Then you just go quiet. But the boss might say, well, what, do you, what do you think? Hmm. And then you can say, well, one of the reasons I think people are careful in meetings, and it's why I'm careful, is that there are times in which you appear to um, uh, be mad at people. It happened yesterday in the meeting hmm. when Simon raised this point, and this is what you said to him. And I saw him go quiet, and I think I would have gone quiet too. And the boss is like to say, well, I think he was wrong. Yeah, that's good. We need to know when you think wrong. But I think it's the way you do it that is causing the problem you're worried about. Can we talk about ways you could raise it? Hmm. Now you're on the boss's side. And not only that, you're the one at direct report who's honest with your boss. Hmm. As bosses walk around wondering what's being kept from them. And you're hmm. saying, I'm not going to keep things from you. That's now, nice. that's risky. Hmm. That takes courage. Hmm. But I don't think in today's world you get very far by playing it safe. Hmm. 